Well, this is lockdown week two. I haven't done anything, I think, since... I didn't even do anything on the Brainman game. I really can't be asked because it was so long ago. Actually, it was over a month ago into the Brainman game. It was 2-0 to Bremen, and it came out to 2-2. Mateus Cunha, I love you so much. I wish that you were going to be alive and at this level forever because, you know, Brazilian Samba, oh, my heart beats almost as much as it beats for Vida de Bicevic for you right now. <sighs> right, that sounded really weird. But anyway, that game was intense and really, really frustrating, and then we were supposed to have the Berlin Derby. Oh, fuck you, Corona. I mean, this may be the worst thing. Uh, the derby may still be played, but it may be played with no supporters. Originally, that was what was supposed to happen. Then the game was postponed and the entire league was postponed. And here we are nearly three weeks, four weeks later. I still have a job. We're all going through a lot of uh, worries right now. But this is one of the craziest things is that I still have this. And that is really, really bad because my flight obviously went ahead two days before. Uh, I think it was two days before. We knew we weren't going to Berlin because there would be no game. So Ryanair messaged me and they said that restrictions in Germany said that non-Schengen passengers would be rejected travel at the border. So you would still be operating the flights. But the problem would be that once you arrived in Germany, if you were a non-Schengen passenger, such as myself, because I'm from the United Kingdom, that you would be refused entry into Germany and probably shipped straight back. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. So, obviously, no Berlin Derby, but um, no football at all. And then, of course, everyone started freaking out. So, obviously, people know. Some people know, some people don't. I have two jobs. Uh, one of them is as a steward. So, obviously, with no football, there's no stewards' jobs. And um, the uh, second job I do, which is my full-time job, is... I'm not going to say anything about the place I work uh, by name because I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, because I do love it, but obviously it's all over the news and I'm not answering questions about things that are going on in the news because I've that, a lot of the things that are in the news are wrong anyway, but I can't say why. Um, I work as an officer uh, at the biggest airport in the United Kingdom. Um, and obviously we're still working because we have a lot of medical supplies. We have a lot of repatriation. I'm seeing people, you know, usually 100,000 people a day, we're getting... 4,000, 5,000. It's horrific. It's it's awful because we're seeing it empty. And when we do see people, they just don't know what's going to happen to them when they get home. Uh, and, of course, the NHS is doing an incredible job, but there are other key workers out there like myself that are seeing the effects of this thing uh, firsthand, and it's it's horrible. Of course, in lockdown, everyone's bored. <coughs> Ugh. Excuse me. That was gross. Like I said, in lockdown, everyone's bored. Um, like, we can only go out once a day. I go out maybe twice a day, one for exercise, one for food. Otherwise, I'm sleeping all day. Like, right now, it's past midnight, and I'm not even tired because I probably woke up at, like, two in the afternoon. I'm just watching football highlights, cricket highlights, everything I can think of because there's nothing to do. Can't go play football in a park. Can't go see my friends. Can't go see my own parents because my mother's vulnerable. Um... And I work at a high-risk place where I have to search people every day. So, obviously, I'm at high risk of getting the virus, which a lot of us have probably already had. Because we were doing this back in December, November, when there was no restrictions on flights here. So, um, I'm, I've had pretty shit few weeks. I was trying to think, what can I do instead of talking about football or about the games? I thought, why not um, look at one of my really crazy hobbies? I say hobbies are like, this is not as bad as half the people on the planet, but I do have collections of things such as hats, such as scarves, like this one, and uh, shirts. Uh, there are so many shirts out there I want, I can't buy them right now because, of course, everyone's trying to save their money, but um, I do have a pretty extensive, not extensive, but uh, quite a few football shirts. So oh, I see you. Ready, ready, dun 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 There's quite a few in there. And I thought I'd take people through the stories of each one because all of them are important to me for different reasons. So, um, how am I going to do this? <laughs> and there you go, that's all of them on top of there. That one's the special on top. Um, 
there is, I think, around 30 different shirts in here. Let's take people through this, because this is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, right, let's try and turn this thing over, because I think every shirt's got a story. Like, most people just collect it for the sake of it, but I actually collect things for a reason. And I get things named, so I'll explain how this works. So, um, how do I begin? Um, I'm doing them back to front, so in my wardrobe, these go from right to left. I always put them in the same order. I try to, because I'm really weird like that. Um, and I, I don't know, I've got about 30 shirts and all of them got a story um, attached. And there's some that I really, really want. I like, for instance, I really want a Brentford Away shirt from this season, because I think it's gorgeous. It's black and yellow. It's beautiful. And also, I want my name and 18 on the back, because I graduated here um, at the University of West London in 2018. And I was going to do this last season, I just forgot. Um, but also because this shirt is so gorgeous, you know, I'd, I'd love to get that done. 2018 is the year I graduated. Um, and I uh, I have lived in Brentford for the four years I studied here. And I love it here. I really do. Like, I love Brentford. I, I refused to move out of Brentford when I had to move out of uni. So, and and I love Griffin Park and I love the club. It's it's a wonderful little club. So that that's the kind of stories I mean. So let's let's get into this with the with the first shirt. <laughs> first shirt is dun, 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 dun. now this one is very special to me. This is a Bosnia shirt. Now this is from. Uh, it's not the exact one because this is um, obviously white. It's also a bit big and it's sort of if you can see that browning on the, a bit on the side because it's been in a wardrobe for so long um it's a medium as you can see got the gold on the back um the reason this shirt is so special this one right here uh in 2013 this kit the legia kit was actually worn um by the bosnia national team when they qualified for their first world cup now they actually qualified in blue so the the goal the goal that won them the game that sent them to the World Cup 2014 was scored by none other than the Vedat or Vedat Ibišević. Um, and if anyone can see, there is a Bosnian flag in my room here. Um, and the reason why this is important to me is that I am not Bosnian myself. My grandfather was born in Banja Luka, um, in Bosnia Herzegovina, and um, he's born there in 1928, I think. And he moved from Bosnia or Yugoslavia to the United Kingdom after the Second World War. Excuse me, Second World War. So that's why my name is a Yugoslavian name. And of course, people are like, which which side do you support? I support all Yugo nations. Really annoys me when people say you need to pick one. Why? My grandfather was from Yugoslavia. It doesn't exist anymore. We had families in Novi Sad in Serbia. We had family in Zagreb in Croatia. So each one of... The, the Yugo Nations is important to me. So this one's only important because that Bosnian World Cup qualification was so important to Bosnia. Um, after all the things they suffered in the war, it was just a beautiful moment. And that shirt, um, because of what it means, because they used this kit during that campaign, it's just really, really special. Weirdly enough, what do we have on the second one? We have... Dun, 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 dun. Bosnia number two! Now, okay, this is from the uh, year after the World Cup. So I don't have the World Cup shirt. I really need it. There is no name on the back of this. As you can see, I didn't get one. Um, I actually bought it because I actually really like the design. Um, this is the new Bosnia badge as well. This is the newer one. Whereas on the other one, if you can see, it is an older badge, like a flag with the football in the middle. Whereas the newer one, it's a lot bigger. Uh, it's a lot clearer. Um, and it's made by Adidas. So that shirt was used... Uh, in the Euros, um, even though they didn't qualify, qualification games, they used that shirt. Um, I remember seeing Edin Dzeko in the shirt, Berad Abisevic, who was like one of my biggest heroes um, because of his story and because of what kind of guy that he is. He retired from the Bosnian national team when this shirt was in use, so that one's important. Oh, I hate to start showing this one because people are going to start hating me. Um, the next one is... Uh, the, the, how do I put myself in... I grew up watching and supporting Man United. As you can tell, I'm not from Manchester. Um, even though my Manchester accent is not really that bad. Um, but 
I grew up in that era of Ferguson being the, this fantastic manager and all of these amazing players that had been developed rather than bought. Um, you know, Ronaldo didn't become Ronaldo overnight. He became Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, we know, because of Sir Alex Ferguson. So I grew up in that era and uh, Oli Solskjaer was always one of my favourite players when I was growing up. Obviously, the, the 1999 um, Champions League final, I remember that as a kid. And when Oli took over uh, at Man United... Um, I kept making like bets with myself every week that if Man United kept winning games, I would buy their away shirt, their third shirt, their home shirt. And that is exactly what happened. So I ended up buying these three. It started off with um, this one, the pink one. This is from is it last yeah, last season um, with, of course, Nemanja Matic on the back. Serbian superstar. I do love Nemanja Matic. He made a very, very important post to me um, about uh, Remembrance Day, actually, where he refused to wear a poppy, and it was nothing to do with the poppy itself. He said no because it was NATO bombing Belgrade. So, it, to me, it made sense. So a lot of people, they were very angry. Um, the next one was, again, I, like I said, bet with myself. Uh, this is the away shirt. This was, um, this was this one, and I told myself I would get Martial, which I did, like I said, bet with myself. I do this a lot. Um, and a lot of the time when things don't go my way, I'm very happy because it means I save some money. And then the last one, I was like, um, if we win this game, I'll get this shirt. I got the home shirt, which I love, by the way. This home shirt is fucking gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, the problem is this. I said I'd get Rashford, and I kind of changed my mind at the last minute, so I ended up getting this geezer. And I actually really like Paul Pogba. Um... But a lot of people don't like him at United because of his attitude, etc. So, that's my three Man United shirts right there from last season. I don't have any from this season. If I was going to get one, I think I'd have to get um, someone I like on the back of it. I love Rashford, so uh, it'll probably be the name. But uh, those that story is not really that that important or that interesting. But that was that was how I ended up with three Man United shirts, and I really like uh, the home one in particular. I like them all. Um, so, I've just realised, I've just realised that I've put them in the wrong order. Right, next one. Ah, now, let's see, now there is a good story behind this one. Um, so, in the 2018 World Cup, I supported England the whole way. Um, my sister supported Croatia, so against, because obviously Yugoland, you know, Yugoslavia, my... Um, my sister has a shirt that I bought, a home Croatia shirt from 2018. I gave it to her, but I managed to get hold of the shirt that I liked more, which was the Away Kit. Look at that. It's beautiful. Like, if you can see the design on it, you know, the check, the checkers, it's uh, dark blue and black. Um, obviously, I think that the, the Croatia logo really sticks out on there. There's no name on the back. Um, it's my size. I like most of these shirts are in my size. They're smaller or medium. Mediums don't fit me quite as well, but um, they still fit me. Um, so like, I gave my sister the home kit of Croatia, but I kept the away one because I liked it more. Um, but I would like to get the uh, home kit again because I think the Croatia kit from the World Cup was gorgeous. Um, and the next one you'll see is uh, more Yugo. Land. Boše pravde ti što spase od propasti do zad nas. Okay, this is um, uh, this is the home kit, and like a lot of my kits, for some reason, the white keeps fading, like getting dirty because it's been left in my wardrobe. I really wanted the away kit so badly from Serbia's World Cup campaign 2018, because again. Yugoslavia, um, but also I, I mean, look at that, you can see the back, uh, Serbian flag um, it's gorgeous, mostly because of this, um, down the front the very front bit, obviously the number would go in that middle empty compartment at the front um, obviously Serbian flag, always written in Cyrillic um, I love it like the quality of it is very different but I actually got this from Sports Direct whilst I was on my way to uh, working at a West Ham game, I saw it, I was like, I need that shirt. And they gave it to me at a discount, because if you can see, just there, there's a bit of a stain, but it came out, so it was stained, there was a little bit of a stain on it, they were like, I'll give you 5% discount, I was like, okay. Um, but it does need washing, so that's interesting enough. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, um, 
Serbia's kit. Very interesting story coming up. Um, so the next one is Polska, Poland. And I don't know if you could see that little safety pin, which I never took off. Um, this is really beautiful. I'm not Polish, uh, but here's the good story. And this is what I mean. All my shirts have a bloody story behind them. In 20, I can't even remember what year it was. It was 2016. In 2016 or whenever it was, the United Kingdom uh, voted to leave the European Union. Uh, I didn't agree with it. I am very pro-EU. I absolutely can't stand anybody that disliked immigrants. My family is from an immigrant background. I am from an immigrant background, even if it's not a European Union nation. And I love traveling within the European Union. They have given me the freedom to be able to go to so many places. So what happened was that uh, I was at uni at the time and my flatmate came in and said that she had suffered some verbal abuse the day after the Brexit vote. Um, somebody came up to her street, uh, her in the street in, in all places, Richmond. Um, Richmond is very, very high class. If you've not been to the UK, it's quite rich. As the name suggests, Richmond. Um, and she said that someone had come up to her, speaking to her mate in English, but with an accent, screaming in her face, uh, Brexit, 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 go back to where you came from. And I had people tell me to go back where I came from. And a lot of Polish people suffered quite a lot of abuse. So in solidarity, if you like, with the Polish people, um, I bought quite a few European Union nation shirts, especially the Poles, because there's a lot of Polish people here. And we had this thing of we would stand with our friends from Poland saying that they are safe with the um with the safety pin so we were saying we would wear a safety pin to show that we were um supportive of them remaining in the uk and that was really why i bought a Poland shirt not only that but i adore jakob Blaf uh, jakob um and obviously he had to just bought christoph piantek so uh piantek piantek um, but that was the reason why I bought Poland shirt. Uh, I I don't wear. I love watching Poland as well. They're a really inter uh, interesting international team. Um, but that was the reason why that one came up. Oh, we were about to get into the interesting stuff because they're all interesting. Because all the Hertha shirts at the back, but it's not Hertha for now. It remains um, more shirts. So the next one is Germany fans may want to look away. Um, there is a story behind this one as well. So, it looks like a five, it's not. That is Marvin Plattenhardt's shirt number two from the World Cup 2018. I'm trying to remember the bloody year. So this was Germany's away kit. I don't think you can see it on here, but some of the green is faded because the numbers were printed. So I bought the number separately and bought the Germany kit. I bought the numbers separately and ironed them on myself when I was at uni and it actually worked out quite well, it took a while. Um, and I, I don't know, I think I did quite well. I don't think that's bad. Do you think that's bad? Because I think that's actually quite good. I think it's quite centered, etc. However, as you know, obviously I love Berlin. I've been going to Germany for years, but that shirt is a bad reminder of what happened at the World Cup 2018. Um, if you remember the South Korea game, they went out. Um, but I really, really liked the green. I thought the green was a really nice colour, and obviously I'm a Hertha fan, so I wanted to see Marvin Plattenhardt play, and he did against um, Mexico. He didn't really do do much, but um, you know, I was still happy to see him play. But that kit is really, really nice, and I'm just sad that they're probably going to change it. <sighs> oh man, this is old. Look at this man. Look. This is old. Um, there is a story behind this as well. So this, oh Christ, um, 2014, look at that. Now, I don't know if you see the back, it's worn. I had this printed myself, not, I didn't do it, but a friend of mine did. I actually went to the printing place because my dad knows the people that owned it and got the, uh, he said, ask for so-and-so and I asked for the wrong name. And they were all looking at me like, oh, do you mean this person? I'm like, uh, yeah, like, oh, I was like, he, he, apparently my dad knows him. Uh, because my dad's tight out. Um, so he does printing and stuff like that. Not for shirts, but for like um, books and uh, posters and stuff. So obviously, Miroslav Kloza is the name on the back, uh, with some uh, numbers that are wearing out pretty badly. Um, I love Miroslav Kloza, but I bought this shirt on my way to Berlin for the second time in my life. So 2014 was the second time I went to Berlin. The first time was 2013 for a concert to see a band called Three Doors Down, my favorite band. 
And when I went back, because I didn't see the city in 2013, I went to a concert and that was it. Um, we didn't even see the Brandenburg Gate. So I went back in 2014 and completely forgot that Germany were playing the day that I arrived. Um, and they're playing Algeria. But I need to get a Germany shirt. And I really desperately wanted the home shirt. And the problem was I didn't have it in my size. So this was at Luton Airport uh, in JD Sports. And uh, so I got the away one, and I like it, like the collar and stuff. Although I really, really love the home shirt, so that's how I ended up with that. And then, of course, I visited Berlin, loved it so much. Went to the Olympic Stadium, was my last ever port of call. It was literally nine in the evening, sun setting. I looked at it and I went, I'd love to see a team play in that stadium at the Olympiastadion, thinking of the German national team. And then when I got home, would not stop talking about Berlin. My dad finally said, have you heard of the Berlin clubs? I think you might like them. And then, obviously, then I looked up on YouTube and I found Hertha. There's your nice story. There's another one. There's not much of a story behind this one, actually. Um, My friend got an England kit at the same time. He's German. And I got the Germany kit. Um, So we wore... Because England played Germany, I think in a friendly maybe two years ago, three years ago now... We wore the opposites of each other. It was quite funny. Um, so there's that one. Next one is this one. Again, it keeps getting like dirty. This is an England kit that I've had a while. Um, it has got a name and number. I really, really miss him. I really like Jamie Vardy. He's one of my favourite England players. Not because it's like Rooney where he scored loads of goals. Um, I loved the way that Vardy just didn't care. And so I wanted a name on an England kit, and that was what came up. Um, and this is, unfortunately, I believe, from 2016's Euros, where we got knocked out by Iceland. Great memories. It's Hugo time! This is a 2016 Euros kit, I think. Or is it from 2014 World Cup? I think this is 2016's Euros. This is Croatia's home shirt. I don't like this one as much as the one that I gave to my sister. I think there's too many checkers, um, but again, Hrvatska. It's uh, Croatia, and of course, I love a bit of Croatia because of the Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, etc. background. Oh, now this is where I get sad because after this one, the Herta shirts come in. Um, this one is rather interesting um, because it just makes me feel a bit sad. So. We have 2016. So this is Man United's kit from that uh, time. And I was so excited when he decided to sign for Manchester United because I love Bastian Schweinsteiger. I've seen him for a long time in the Bundesliga. Really funny guy as well. I was so excited to have him at Man United and he just wasn't used. And he just didn't like fit in with the plans of Mourinho. He wasn't used. I was really angry when they sort of mistreated him because he wanted to play for Man United really badly. If he was ever going to leave Bayern, it would be to go to mm. Man United. And um, that would be... Um, that would that was my dream as well, to see a player of that like calibre and history going to a team like Man United. And it really broke my heart that he didn't do that well. Um, but that goal against Watford, you know, goal against Wigan, he just... He was just such a good character. I, and when he made that appearance, um, and he came on, I think it was against Wigan Athletic, everyone, the crowd just, oh, they just were so excited to see him come back. So um, it's, it's a sad story. So what have we here? We've moved on to my favourites. Of course, it's the Hertana shirts. It calls for a change in costume. <laughs> so, ow! I can't believe I just walked into my wardrobe door. This hat I have had with me for, I think, about four years, but it's still the one I take everywhere. Here are the Hatana stuff. We start off with my first ever Hatta shirt. Now, um, this is cool because this is what... I bought this from Sports Direct. Um, this is from the era of Deutsche Bahn, which I love, by the way. I really can't stand the new sponsors. Bet at Home was okay, but fucking Teddy, man. Oh, German bloody Poundland. Ugh. So this is 2014-15. We were nearly relegated this season. We were saved by Paul Dardai. Um, We were very, very close to going down. We actually survived. 
And the first game I ever watched on TV before I ever went to the stadium, so around the time, um, obviously, after the World Cup, where I actually thought it's a watch Hertha on TV, um, because my dad told me to and I was fascinated by German football and how it was different. Um, I remember watching the first game and 2-0 up, Hertha were 2-0 up, they drew 2-2 with Gerard Bremen. And that is uh, how you that is how you realise that Hertha is not a club that is bound for success. Not yet, anyway. So we continue with a shirt that people hate. I don't hate it. I love it. I actually think it's really funky, but people do dislike it. It wasn't the one I bought first. The one I bought first was actually the next one. So for this se- that season coming up. This is Hertha's 2016-17 kit. This is the time I started purchasing every single kit every season. And if you can see, Yuri and Shiba. So the story goes that we went to the first game of the season in 2016-17. I really wish I had kits from 15-16 uh, because that was a good season, including the DFB Pokal shirt, which I could have bought three or four years ago because it was on sale in the shop. I'm an idiot, I didn't buy it, and I wish I had, because it was gorgeous, it had a collar, it was beautiful. But this is when I started collecting Herta shirts, like, every season. Has the thing on the arm, has Hermes on the side, it's not, um, embroidered, it is printed on the third shirt. Sheba was printed on the back, and this is where the tradition began, that the third shirt of every season would be have the name on the back of the goal scorer that scored the winning goal of our first victory of the season. So the first game of the season in 2016-17 was against Freiburg. We were 1-0 up in the 60th minute. It was 37 degrees outside. It was boiling and we had to move from the Oskova into um, the sort of Orbering in the middle where it was shaded because we were so warm. And then, of course, we scored in the 60th minute. The reader never celebrates against Freiburg because it's his old team. And uh, Freiburg then equalised. I was live streaming on Facebook and Freiburg equalised in the 91st minute. And we were thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. And my friend was sitting next to me and you can hear him say, this is why we have to be pessimistic in here. Yeah, that's it. Um, and that was really, really like, we were so deflated. And then suddenly it's 94th, 5th minute. Yuri and Shiba somehow managed to squeeze through in the penalty area uh, with Haraguchi, who turned, got it through to Shiba. Shiba managed to slot it through under the keeper's legs, really, like, trickled through, into, the, and it went in. 95th minute winner, he was our winning goal scorer, and it's happened every year since that I've got the name on the back of the shirt, except for this season, which maybe I should have. I do it for luck. We haven't had much luck this year. Oh, the next one is actually a shirt again I bought in Sports Direct along with the one after which I got printed at the shop afterwards rather than get printed at the time because normally now I get them from Berlin and I print them at the time this is a this away shirt from that same season it's really nice but it, it fades really quickly I used to wear this all the time underneath the blue and white stripes for luck even when it was boiling hot outside you can see the same one here from the same season Oops. Um, I love this kit. This is my favourite shirt in recent seasons, except for the one I now wear a lot, which is 2018-19. Um, this is 2016-17. Um, the stripes are like pinstripes down the middle of the blue. And Ibizovic on the back. This is when I first get Ibizovic. It's a medium, and it's quite faded as well, because I used to wear it a lot. But I, I love that shirt. Like, the design of it was really nice and it's got a lot of memories. That was the season we reached um, sort of sixth place uh, and Ibizovic was on fire that season. It was the season that we drew 1-1 one, one with Bayern when they scored in the 97th minute. Hmm. Yeah, maybe the memories aren't quite so great after all. Oh, but I love that shirt. But the next one, here comes the tradition thing again. So 2018-19? Is it 18-19? No, 2017-18, where we started pretty well. Ew. Um, third shirt was red, and we liked it. It's really nice. Look at that. How cool is that? This is the 125th anniversary shirt, because you can see it's got the gold lining around the crest, and I'll show you something cool inside the other shirts in a minute. Um, Matthew Leckie, 
was the winning goal scorer for our first victory. I believe it was against Stuttgart. It was 2-0. He scored that winning goal. Really decent goal. He was on fire at the beginning of that season. He scored an amazing goal against Leverkusen. Um, I really like the red kit. I, I like the, the colour and I like the sleeves. I think the sleeves are pretty amazing on that one. Um, if you can see it. Um, but it, it was, again, it was um, printed, not embroidered. Um, so actually on this one, you can't see it because it's not embroidered, but on the next one you will see something that was done for the 125th anniversary of the club uh, on the shirt. So we're about to see a shirt at the time when Davy Selker could actually score goals. I'm kidding, I love Davy Selker, but um, yeah, his season hasn't gone quite as amazing. So Selker at that season was actually, this is the only season I think I don't have an Ibizovic shirt, Again, away shirt. This is one of my favourites. Look at the colour. I mean, it's gold, gold crest. It's beautiful. Uh, Selka on the back. And this is a season where he played really, really well for us. And on the inside of the crest, there was this. So, as you can see, 125 years Hertha BSC. 125 Jahre. How to be a C. And I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, but like I said, I bought every shirt from every season since like three years ago. And this is the collection. This is where the collection builds up. So, the next one, well, the completing that season. Or well, actually sort of completing that season. Um, this was the home shirt. Um, this is my least favourite home shirt of the last four years. I think it's quite boring. It looks like... Um, Brighton Hove Albion shirt, like a carbon copy. The only good thing, again, was that the, the, on the inside of the crest, you had the um, the 125-year uh, thing here. But also on the back, this was a time where Arna Meyer was becoming a fantastic player at Hertha, and I really like him. Um, and I, I just loved the way he developed that season. He came up from the youth squad, and he ended up being um, our really important first-team player. I just... I didn't really like the colour of that kit that season. It just it didn't strike me as being exciting. The Bet at Home logo is white in the middle and I just didn't like it. Whereas, as you can see here, it was just white on black. Whereas here, there was like, there was rectangular. It, it's an oblong. Oblong's a good word. It's an oblong shape. I don't really, I don't like that. Um, like I said, collectors. First one on a goalkeeping shirt, and this is my least favourite goalkeeping shirt the last few years because for some reason at Hertha, goalkeeping shirts only tend to get sold in kid sizes. And I have a few kid sizes shirts because um, I'm small, but for goalkeeping shirts it tends to just go up to a large and I'm an extra large kid. Um, <laughs> that sounded really bad, but um, it's true. So this is the only goalkeeping shirt I think I have for Hertha. Excuse me. It's from that same season. Uh, again, crest is printed. And of course, on the back, they're none other than our number 22, Mr. Rune Yarstein. I have worn this kit actually in goal because it has the padding on the arms, if you can see that. So if you are diving around, it is pretty good for using. Okay. Next one's actually quite interesting. The next two are actually very interesting. Because, I don't know if you can see this, I can't remember what order we're going in. Um, ah, there's not many left. Um, this is very interesting because this is 125th anniversary. We played Liverpool in a friendly game at the Olympic Stadium. I think it was about 50 to 60,000 there. And it was a good friendly game. And this was the year that Marvin Plattenhart signed a new contract with Hertha. And he's actually worked his way back in the squad this year. The design... When they were released, I was like, what the hell is that? Um, and I don't think it has the 125th year. No, but it is nice. Um, obviously, you can see there's Marvin Plattenhart. I got that name because of the new signing extension. When we saw these shirts designed, we were given different choices of which design we wanted, and we voted. people voted on it. And when you see these on paper, they look horrible. Like, even this one looked awful. But when you see it in person, it's really, really nice. Um, I really like it. Like, uh, it's obviously got the gold as well. Better Homes actually printed properly, other than, uh, no, with no rectangle. And, 
you know, just look at that nice design. It's got all the Berlin landmarks, the Funktum, um, I don't think the Brandenburg Gates on there, the Olympia Stadion's on there, Brandenburg Gates on there. Um, I don't think Alexanderplatz is on there, but it's it's beautiful shirt. Um, it it was. I don't know if anyone can see that actually. The better home bit. The better home logo very 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 slowly started to peel off. So um, I had to super glue it on. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I actually when I looked it on paper, I hated that shirt until I saw it in real life and was like, I want it. Next one is Blast from the Past because I was not even a thought in my parents' minds and the parents' parents were not in the parents' thoughts in their minds either when this shirt was worn. Maybe not, actually. This is the retro shirt. This is so nice. Um, the material is completely different to a football shirt you would find now. It's really thick and it's really nice. Um, you can see Retro Tricot. Um, this was when we were the whole how to be a C since 1892. So this was really nice. I really like a good retro kit that looks like it actually fits. Right, now we move into last season now. Um, third shirt. The player that scored the winning goal from our first victory would have been Ibizovic. He scored... Uh, I, can't, I don't think it was a penalty actually he scored the goal against Nuremberg and a first home game of that season when we were on fire in that first part of the season um, and he scored and you would think that they said, oh you must get Ibizovic well actually Rune Jarstein won that game for the for us because Nuremberg had a penalty in the 83rd minute and Jarstein saved it so in the next game we had Schalke Gelsenkirchen sorry I didn't mean to swear. Um, and the winning goal was hit by none other than Mr. Norwich himself, Andre Duda. This, whoopsie, this kit is bloody boring, but really nice. Because the material on this third kit is really different to the material on the other two. This is really thin. It's a shame people can't feel it. It's, like, breathable. So in hot weather, especially because it's white, it's perfect. Um, but this is also the season we started to get German Poundland on our shirts. So um, it just ruins everything. If it was just Teddy without the circle, I think people would be fine with it. But man, oh, just Teddy, man. Why? Ah, oh, right. Okay. Okay. So next one, away kit from last season. Um, I really like this kit, actually. The, I really like the lines. This is last season's away kit with... Marko Grujic. Now, Grujic obviously is Serbian, so that's one thing that makes you happy. Um, but also, he was one of our star talents last season. I don't know what's happened this year. Um, and I absolutely adored him for all the work he did. So I wanted his name so badly. This is one I always wear all the time now because he's so special to me. Um, and I have almost the exact same shirt next as well, except for a little twist. Which has a good story behind it as well. This is the home shirt from 2018-19. Uh, I love this shirt, except for obviously Teddy. Um, I don't have the Bundesliga logo, obviously. On Grujic's one I do. This one I don't. Um, I bought this and had it named. It's a little bit more worn than the others. Like you can see on the Teddy logo, it's like worn. Um, Ibizovic on the back. My absolute hero. But I love that kit. And... I wanted that after he scored the penalty against Bayern that got us the 2-0 victory because that shirt, that's what it reminds me of. Right, are you ready for uh, an almost identical shirt? Um, it's not identical, but near enough. And there's a similar story because the next one is almost exactly the same story. This is home shirt with my name and 93, my birth year on it. Now, the reason that that exists is because I wanted to get a shirt that was designed for um, equality, which we were having, a rainbow kit. Now, Hata pulled these rainbow kits off the shelves and decided to just have the third kit with a rainbow teddy in the middle because a lot of fans kicked off like, we must be wearing blue and white at home. We can't be wearing some pretty rainbow kit, you know, no matter what it's for. They kicked off about it and all the, um, the equality kits um were 
taken off the shelves. And there was one on the shelf, or not on the shelf, but on the, on the counter when I wanted to go buy one. And I said, am I not allowed to buy it? And they said, no, nah, we're not allowed to sell it. Well, why? They, they literally withdrew all of them. And a lot of people wrote to Ingo Schiller and was like, well, I really want one. I was going to get one with my name on it because equality means a lot to me. And actually, I think on this home kit, I've got my name, but no accents. D-R-A-G-I-C-E-V-I-C, -E -I -I right? Um, this next kit is exactly that. This is the rainbow kit. This is the kit we were supposed to wear um, against Leverkusen on the last day of the season. I managed to get it and I, I had it ordered online. So the only one except for the anniversary kit they had online. And it's got my name, as you can see with the accents on it, same numbers, everything. I really desperately wanted one of those kits. Um, and I was really pissed off when they took them off the shelves because I really wanted one, you know, I have an immigrant family, my uncle's gay, my mother's disabled, my, um, you know, my family's very, very um, diverse, like, if people know what the word diverse is, it's gonna be me. I wanted a diversity shirt, that's what they were called, diversity shirts. I wanted one really badly and I was so angry when they took them off shelves. When I finally got hold of one, I was so happy to get it, like, so happy. Especially with my own name and number on the back, it was just one of those moments of thank God for that. We're moving to this season. So, I do like the shirts from this season. Marco Grujic on the back. I may actually sell this shirt or give it away and get someone else because he's been terrible this year and I think he's going to end up going back. I will miss him because I really like him, but um, right now I'd rather have pear shell bread on the back. Um, but I'll give it away. I don't want to just get rid of it and sell it. Um, I've already got one of his name. That's probably the reason why. The only player I repeatedly get on a shirt would be Ibizovic. Um, But I I might keep it. I might give it. But uh, I would love, because Shellbread's leaving, I would love to get his name. Or Kalu on the home shirt. I just, you know, it would be really, really important. I love Shellbread and I'm going to miss Kalu. But, you know, Kalu could be back. Shellbread most likely won't be, um, but Kalu Nivizovic might come back in some other form. But yeah, this home show is actually really nice. It's got a kind of retro feel. Um, there's nothing swanky about it. It doesn't do too much. Um, and it, obviously the little red bit on the back of the neck is quite nice. And obviously the Berlin bear in the middle. It's nice. Uh, it's just not, like, it doesn't pop out at you. The material is different as well. It feels like that third kit that I was saying was more breathable. It, it's a lot thinner. Ah, we're getting there. I think we've got a few more. So this next one is this year's away kit. Um, when I first saw this, I thought, what the fuck is that? Um, it has got, oh shoot, Javiro Dilrosson on the back. Um, first sort of 10 games of the season, Javiro Dilrosson was unbelievably good. He was getting us like wins out of nothing you know he was scoring goals and setting up goals and he was unbelievable so I, I adore him as well he was great this season and um then he had a bit of a patch where he wasn't quite good but the kit itself as you can see is sort of in quarters so um excuse me the back is just black on the back but it's sort of in halves and and then the sh the, the sort of sleeves are in quarters so it obviously goes black red black red um, the colour scheme, I think, is very typical Hertha away, and uh, we've had black and red stripes quite a few times in the past. But actually, this sort of design really reminded me of um, a Blackburn shirt a few, sort of like 10 years ago, so a few years ago back, um, where it had the sort of similar design of that, sort of half and half slash quarters. Um, and I didn't like it when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not so sure about this. And then I saw it, it's like, actually, that's all right. It's quite nice. Um, I actually quite like it. Uh, again, just Teddy. And then we've got the final shirt from this season, official shirt anyway, of what we've worn. Um, so how many more have I got? Like a few more. Um, this is the third shirt. Now, normally you would get the winning goal scorer from our first vi victory of the season. That would have been Marius Wolf. This is the first season I didn't do it. Maybe it's not proved me so much luck. It's got Vido on the back, of course, my hero. Um, this is really cool because to start with, I think it was just supposed to be grey. This isn't just grey. It's got all of the Berlin uh, district logos on it, crests. 
So coat of arms for every district within the city. Um, we have gone back to doing berserk training. So district training. Well, that was before coronavirus. Um, we're very much because maybe because of Bunyan coming up as well. There's a lot of we are the team of the city, and that's what was sort of on there. And I don't think you can see it quite that clearly. You can there, and I really love that. Like Berliners can see on that shirt which district their district on that shirt i think it's great now we have retro feel so uh we wanted to play against union berlin on the 9th of november because uh that would be the anniversary of the fall of the wall now union berlin said no they were thinking it shouldn't be a rivalry day but a day of celebration it was a cop out uh so instead what happened was that we played union i don't think it was the ninth was it the 19th I think it was the 19th, actually. Was it the 9th? I actually can't... No, it was the 9th. Because we played Union Berlin on the 2nd and I was there. Um, this kit was designed for the anniversary of the Fall of the Wall. There was also a lot of stuff done that day. Um, Berlin Wall fell down in the stadium. It was fantastic. I have to show you a video of it. It's beautiful. But this shirt was designed because when we had the fall of the wall this was the shirt that was being worn by Hertha so obviously on the back Berlin 89 this is a kid shirt by the way it does fit me on the front this was the design that we would have had back then um the Berlin Bear Hertha BSC and it was just a very retro feel it was a little bit of a letdown because we thought they'd do a bit more you know especially because the arms are really really barren there's nothing on there second shirt I had delivered by the way home shirt and I just realized I'd never seen that on this shirt before as well so the next one is very interesting you might like this um that shirt was worn against leipzig on the 9th of november we lost the game 4-2 so it didn't bring much luck but it was very interesting build up to that game and that shirt was worn let's say i got a bit distracted then because i've not really looked at the back of the next one so story time uh last summer me and my sister went to Belgrade and to Banja Luka for the first time ever um, even though our family was originally from there only our father went there in the 1970s and on a personal level I was a little bit too scared to go back because I was scared about what I was going to see you know you know about everything that happened and all of that but you never want to actually see it because it's basically a lot of history that's very difficult to deal with um, and this next year I bought at the airport because I couldn't find it anywhere else um, and it was on sale and someone said this is like like uh, 90,000 Serbian Dina, is that what it's called? Dina? Yeah. And she looked at me and said, are you sure you want that? Because that's really expensive. I was like, yeah. It was about £92. I had the money so I bought it. But of course I had to. Um, I would have preferred the home shirt but this was, I think, the away one. Um, a medium. Yeah, this is the season before. Red Star Belgrade. Shvedna Zvezda. Um, I, I have a few clubs I follow in um, in the old Balkan nations. Obviously, Borac Banja Luka. Uh, Borac, Borac, sorry. I can't believe I just said that. It's because I'm used to saying it another way. Borac Banja Luka is obviously Bosnian Premier League team. Um, that play in Banja Luka. Uh, I also follow um, FK Zeleznica. Um, so Zale um, Zeleznica are um, Sarajevo team. I prefer them over FK Sarajevo. And also, of course, Red Star Belgrade and Partizan Belgrade. I, I follow them both. I don't dislike either of them, but of course, when you are in Belgrade, the biggest club is Red Star. And of course, they won that European Championship. So... Red Star, I, I love watching it. When they beat Liverpool, I was so excited. Um, I also have a little, like, Partizan Belgrade little scarf because I bought quite a few little things. And I like both teams. Um, we walked all the way to the Red Star Stadium in, like, 30-degree heat, and I wish we hadn't, and my sister hates me for it. But um, that Red Star shirt was bought, you know, simply because it's Red Star Belgrade. And this last one is a story um, that I think people should hear about. So... This is the second season that, well, the only season where I've bought, sorry, second season where I bought the same shirt. It's the only season where I bought two shirts with two separate players' names on. Now, this is also a kid shirt because it fits me better, but um, the story goes, well, I'll explain it in a minute. Let me show you what it is first. This is how to be a C. I tried to get rid of Teddy, but the sticker's not quite big enough. 
it says 25 say no to racism and on the back is number 25 and our amazing defender um mr jordan turunariga so this all came about i actually asked people should i get this shirt <laughs> a lot of people said yes some people said no don't waste your money um i had the money to do it so why not so um Hertha played against schalke in the dfb pokal in uh, i can't even remember when it was um january i think and um there was an incident around the 70th minute where jordan turunariga was really visibly upset and nobody quite knew why and then when it came back when it sort of reverberated around uh, it turns out that he had been subjected to racist abuse from the Schalke supporters for about 40 minutes um, and nobody was doing anything about it now the referee was made aware of what was going on but he claimed that because it happened so long before it was reported and because he didn't hear anything he couldn't intervene um, usually the scenario would be that you would play a, um announcement in the stadium, then you would stop the game, then you would walk off. Now, the, you know, to, I, I've met John Turunariga. Um, he's, a, he's quite an interesting character. Um, he's very private. You know, that's inevitable. He is very... you. I mean, from the way he plays and the way he is on the pitch, you would think that he is quite hot-headed and loud-mouthed, but he is the opposite. He is so, so quiet. Um, and he's he barely smiles, you know, even though he's not... He's sort of like one of those gentle giants that really doesn't mean any harm. Um, and he's just someone that's very private and keeps to himself, but he can have an explosive temper. And that's what happened in this Schalke game, is that we went... We were 2-0 up, we were stupid enough to concede, but I think the players were all over the place once they realised what was going on. And got back to 2-2, and then... Jordan was ordering the yellow card for a tackle and in that game he'd been amazing he'd made a last like ditch tackle on the line he'd cleared off the line in the few games before that he'd been amazing um, and he got so frustrated with the fact that this monkey noises in the crowd continued that he was sort of shoved out of play by a Schalke player and as reaction, he grabbed hold of a drink spot, um, a drinks crate with bottles in it, and threw it at the floor in frustration. I mean, David Wagner was trying to actually calm him down, but he touched him on the back, and he obviously didn't want to be touched. And um, Wagner got a red card, but obviously Turun Riga got sent off for dissent. Now Turun Riga was on that pitch twenty minutes before that, asking for help, and in tears. And if uh, you know, I, I don't know him personally, but a lot of us know. Uh, what his kind of attitude is he is not someone that starts crying on a pitch for no reason if he's crying and people can see him it's for, it's for a reason um, it's the same with most players but with, with Jordan in particular he is very um, to himself private but at the same time um, can be quite tricky um, can have quite an explosive temper um, it reminds me of like an introverted Ibizovic, if you like. He most of the time keeps quiet, but um, if he's got something to say, he'll say it. And it's just you know the the um, the way it was was uh, just so unfair on him, and everybody was really upset because I know how it feels. I've you know immigrant background. I know how it feels for someone to 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 make racist comments at you and that you. You, you're one of these people that you, you feel like you hate yourself because you can't change your skin colour or where you're from and you wish you at that moment in time that you could so that people would stop hating you for no reason and it you know that racist incident nothing was done um, so uh, you know it must have made Jordan feel like complete shit you know like without like that sounded really bad um, it made must have made him feel really on the inside like really crappy and like upset it must have made him feel really awful and how do you deal with something like that it made us feel like shit it made him feel like crap on the inside it made everyone angry so the first thing we did um was think what can we do and a lot someone came up with the idea of printing off jordan's name <coughs> um 
on a piece of paper and handing them out and that's what happened we distributed all these um names and um we held them out in the Austrilung for the next game this is a game against Mainz which unfortunately we lost and um when Jordan's name was called out at the Austrilung as well it was louder than anything people started applauding cheering and I had this made specifically for that game uh, so that I could wear it um and it was really emotional moment as well um I was really proud to wear that shirt on that day to support him because I know how awful it feels. So that was that was why I had the Jordan Trinariga shirt made. And he continues to be an incredible player and person, you know, even if he's a little bit um, unpredictable sometimes. You know, he continues to be a really, really, really important player in that squad. So that was all my shirts, all 30 of them. Enjoy. I hope you liked my story about why I have so many shirts.